acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Here we have again the, the Ten Commandments, right? We've, we've studied these last summer, this past summer we went through a, like a three or four week session on the Ten Commandments, and they come back up again in our, in our narrative lectionary cycle, and some congregations that I've, I've, I share information with on Facebook, and we, we go back and forth about the narrative lectionary and what we're doing in different weeks, some of them said, well, we're not doing this again because we just did it in the summer, so they did something different this morning, but I thought, no, we'll do the Ten Commandments again, because there's something extra in this version that we didn't get during the summer, and that's chapter 19, right? Chapter 19 starts out with, before God is given to Moses the Ten Commandments, it's about God talking to Moses and telling him what's going to happen, and God tells to Moses that he is going to call him up to the mountain, and there, here's what I want you to tell my people, right? Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, you have seen what I did to, to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagle's wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possessions out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. Okay, so my question in that then is, what does it mean to be priestly? Does that mean you all need to buy robes like this and walk around like this all day? Right? That's what that's what priestly is, right? You walk around in, in fine, I would say cotton, but this is polyester. It's very hot. <laughs> Robes, right? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they make them quite your size, so it might be difficult. But, no, that's not really what priestly is. You'll be not only a priestly kingdom, but a holy nation. What does it mean to be holy? Not holy, W H O L Y. What? Sinless. Sinless. Can you be? No. So how are you going to be a holy nation? We can try, but will you even if you even if you try, will you be? No. You can't do that. It's not possible. Who? How is that possible? How is it possible for us to be sinless? So I heard it. Somebody said it. Say it a little bit louder. Through Christ. Christ made us sinless, right? When, when Jesus died on a cross for us, that is what makes us sinless. In that relationship that he gains for us, in dying on the cross, he takes away everything that we've ever done. And that's what we confess at the beginning of every service, right? We lay everything at the feet of Jesus because Jesus is the only way that we can be made right and brought into the presence of God. But here in Exodus, God says to the Israelites... You will be my treasured people. You will be my priestly kingdom. You will be my holy nation. Because I've what I've done for you. Right? And this is in chapter 19. This is before he's even given the Ten Commandments. Right? If you follow my covenant and live under my words, then you will be this for me. This is before he's even given us the Ten Commandments. And our reading ends for chapter 19 with verse 7, which is kind of a misnomer. So Moses came and he summoned all of the elders of the people and he set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded them. And verse 8 continues, and the people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses reported these words of the people to the Lord. Even before they knew what God was going to ask them to do, the people already said, yes, we'll do it, whatever it is, because God has brought us out of slavery into the into the land of freedom. He's going to lead us to the promised land and give us that which he told us he was going to give us. Right? But God says he's going to make them a priestly kingdom. The thing we have to understand about a priest is a priest in the Catholic church and in, the, in any church, a pastor is seen this way too, is a... A what? A leader... I'm old and half deaf. A teacher? What else? A man of God or a woman of God, depending thereupon. Right? Person of God, there, you know. Right? Or a some what is someone that's called a go-between? A 
mediator. Understanding in, in this time and in, in space that priests were people that mediated between the people and God. Moses was a priestly man because Moses did what? He mediated between God and the people. And here when God says that he's going to make you a priestly kingdom, he's going to make you a mediator between him and the people. Are you ready for that? Doesn't matter if you are or not. God says you're going to be. So there you go. God's going to make you a priestly kingdom. And the priestly nation is to be an intermediary for the world. Holy and priestly nation is a blessing here. God blesses the people of Israel by saying that I'm going to make you out of all the people of the world. You're going to be my priestly kingdom. You're going to be the people that's going to go between me and everyone else and help them understand how much I love them. The same thing he does for each and every one of you. Right? These, these commandments we take as rules that we have to follow. But they're more than that. You see, we as Christians, we read these and it says in verse 20 that then Moses went up to God and God called him out of the mountain saying, and you say this to the Lord, right? Then God spoke these words. And we envision this that it's God standing up in this high mountain and he's talking to Moses. Right? You've all seen the movie, right? As God speaks, they get transcribed on the, the tablets, right? And that's exactly how it happened because that's, that we know that that's how it happened, right? That's not how it happened. Moses was the first person to download anything from the cloud, though, so. <laughs> but God spoke, and as God spoke, the commandments were given, right? Well, ancient rabbis envision this as it's not just a conversation between God and Moses. It's actually a conversation between God and all of the people. And that when God said, I am the Lord your God, the, the, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. Ancient rabbis envision all of Israel shouting, yes. And every time God said something to them, they responded, yes or no, depending upon what the proper answer was, right? You shall not commit adultery. No, we won't. You shall not steal. No, we won't. You shall not bear false witness. No, we won't. Right? We envision this as God just saying, here's the rules, you have to follow them. That's not what this is about. You see, the, the very first thing there that we miss is the, what God says to each and every Israelite. God says it there in the first commandment, right? I am the Lord your God who brought who out of the land of Egypt and slavery? You. And is that, is that word there, see this is the, the downfall of English again, is that word you, or is it y'all, or is it all y'all, or is it, what is it? That's my Texas coming out again, right? Because y'all is singular and all y'all is plural. So is it God saying, I brought y'all out of Texas, I brought y'all out of, not out of Texas, out of <laughs> Egypt? Some would say getting out of Texas is like getting out of Egypt, but there you go. <laughs> Is it God saying, I called you out of the land of slavery? I called you out of the land of slavery. Or is God saying, I called you out of the land of slavery? Which is it? And why is that important? Does God want a relationship with us as a church? Or does God want a relationship with us as individuals? Yes. That's a trick question, by the way. <laughs> The answer to that is yes, but what is the answer here in Exodus? God said, I call you, Patrick. I called you, Paul. I called you, John. I called you, Bill. I called you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. It's a personal relationship that God is calling us to here. God calls each and every one of us and he says, I don't want you to do any of these things because I already have that relationship with you and I want you to continue in it. You see, we look at these as things that, that keep us in and, and don't allow us to do what we need to do. We look at them as rules or as, as bondage as things that keep us locked into a specific set of things that has to be done. 
But anyone who has ever been freed from any kind of bondage, addiction, a, an abusive relationship, a job that you didn't like, would see that there's things that has to be done in order for you to be out of that. And those things are not rules or condemnations on your life. Those things are freedom. Right? That's freedom to you. God isn't saying don't do these things because, because you can't do them. God is saying to all of us, don't do these things because if you don't do these things, then life is going to be wonderful and we're all going to live in this, this peace and understanding that I don't have to worry about my stuff. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen in my relationships. I don't have to worry about wanting somebody else's stuff because everything that I need is going to be given to me. And it's not about anything else out there. It's about what God has already done for me and what God is calling me to. God has said, I love you the way that you are, and I called you out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery, and I brought you to where I'm bringing you, and I want you to live in this relationship with me forever. And that's what these commandments are ultimately about. They're ultimately about us understanding who God is, and how God has already created a relationship with us, and wants us to continue in that with Him, and with all of our brothers and sisters. God called you out of the house of slavery. But he wants you to be an intermediary for him in this world to share his love and to show what's happening through your life and through his kingdom. So know that he always goes with you and boldly go out into the world, keeping yourself open to what God is going to do in and through you, knowing that he loves you no matter what and that he's already raised you up for you to just continue in that relationship with him. And to share the love that he's given to you with all of the world.